Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools, and on today's episode, if you want to learn how we made this life-size Sonic the Hedgehog ring out of just epoxy and gold pigments, well, you better keep on watching. Let's get started. To tell the story properly, we have to start from the beginning. Okay, maybe not that far beginning. This beginning. Yeah, I was an 80s, 90s kid, and I loved the Ninja Turtles best thing ever. There was a short time where there was Power Rangers, but we won't talk about that. However, in the early 90s, I found the Sega Genesis, yeah, and I found out that there was a game called Sonic the Hedgehog. It completely captivated my full attention, as well as probably a lot of other kids, because this game was insanely popular, probably the most popular game on the Sega Genesis platform, and I could not stop playing it. I'm sorry to my parents because I probably paid this way too much as a kid, but when I found out that they were making a movie starring Sonic the Hedgehog as well as Jim Carrey, one, I thought this is like two decades too late, but two, I became very excited for the movie as well as the fact that I just wanted to pay a bit of a tribute to Sonic the Hedgehog and my childhood. So we're making a Sonic the Hedgehog ring today, yes. And it all starts with some rigid foam insulation of all places. So what I did was actually took two inch thick rigid foam cut it approximately 20 inches by 20 inches in order to make a form for our ring. Now the ring will be epoxy poured and inevitably there's a number of different ways you could actually do this, but this is the way I did it and it seemed to work out for the most part. Now, in all honesty and full disclosure, there was a number of different ways I tried making a perfectly round circle. I won't bore you with those because it's just a headache, and thankfully, I found an easy way to do it, which is why I am incorporating a jigsaw into my cutting apparatus. This was by far the easiest way to cut a perfect round circle, as well as probably the cheapest way. All I needed was one piece of flat stock wood, as well as some 3M double-sided sticky tape. And with my jigsaw, I'm able to perfectly and easily cut a nice even circle all the way around. Now one thing you have to count for when you're making this jig is that you want your holes to be parallel with each other. Now there's gonna be three holes actually in this board. One is gonna be the hole for the actual blade itself. The other one is gonna be six inches away from that hole and the other one's gonna be eight inches away from that hole, which will give you a 16 inch outer diameter with a 12 inch inner diameter. Now once I have my jig done and ready to rock, I then grab my rigid foam and just found the center point for my circle. Now once I had that determined, I then took a three inch long screw and placed it in the direct center of the rigid foam. Now it doesn't have to be one specific type of screw, as long as it's going into the substrate below the foam, you're good. Now the perfect thing about using this jigsaw with the rigid foam is the fact that the jigsaw itself goes down approximately two inches exactly, but it doesn't go down far enough because if it did, then it would be cutting into the surface below the rigid foam, which it does not. This allows the jigsaw to ride perfectly over the rigid foam evenly and consistently all the way around. And as you can see, this was my first time trying this type of system and it cut the foam in a perfect circle the very first time and was very much appreciated after a few missteps with a router. Just saying, it was a process to get to this point. But that's really why I love this channel and why I'm doing this because I love learning and helping others learn new processes. And this was a new system. No, you're not gonna be most likely making your own Sonic the Hedgehog ring with epoxy, but you might try and actually figure out how to cut rigid foam or cut anything in a perfect circle. Now I take generic clear Packers tape and apply Packers tape on all the surfaces in which the epoxy is going to be in contact with. Now I've used this type of tape on past epoxy projects and it's worked out perfectly. However, just note to self on the interior circle here, it worked out perfectly, but on the outer circle, it actually came apart at a certain point because the adhesive on the back side of the tape was not strong enough to solely hold its position over time, especially with wet epoxy. So just keep that in mind, maybe use a stronger tape if you try and do this yourself. Just keep that in mind. 
Now I also apply a plastic clear film to my backer board so the epoxy doesn't stick to that as well. Now once we have that in place, I then take 100% silicone and silicone a nice fat ring all the way around on both the inner circle as well as the outer framework. This ensures that the epoxy won't leak through after the silicone dries. Note to self that when I say dries, I mean it really makes sure it's fully dried because at a certain point, the epoxy did leak through on this project and it's probably because I didn't wait long enough for the silicone to dry thoroughly and therefore, you know, an hour or two in, it decided to leak on one of the sides, but you'll see that here coming up. Now once I flipped the foam over, I made sure that I had equal spacing on all sides to make sure that I had a perfectly rounded surface. But once you have that step taken care of, it's time for some epoxy pouring. Now we are using Total Boat Thick Set Epoxy because we are going to be pouring this all at once and this epoxy will allow us to pour thicker pours than normal. Just always make sure you're reading the instructions when using this and note that this is a 3 to 1 product so you have part A and B and the part A is a three part product and the part B is just a one part product. I mix it up thoroughly, hence the word thoroughly, and then we move on to pigment. Yes, we are using a plethora of different type of gold pigments because who knows what a Sonic the Hedgehog ring should look like. So inevitably I'm using a plethora of different types of gold products that I've used in the past and I want in this project even some gold leaf. Yeah, who doesn't love a little gold leaf? Now I used five separate jars for the five different pigments because I wanted to see first off which one I actually like more as well as mixing them differently will generally give you a different variance and I want a depth for this project so I wanted to really test out what each one looks like and determine which pigment really does make this sonic ring pop. Right? Pop. And just like any of the products or tools that I stand behind, I'll make sure and leave links in the description box below on where to actually purchase said products. And just remember again, I am an Amazon affiliate, so anything you purchase through my links, whether it's the products I note or anything else, will be greatly appreciated and will help the channel. Now this was really the fun portion of this project because you truly got to see this ring come to life as well as the fact that we use so many different types of gold. I felt like it really gave a very unique and interesting depth to the overall epoxy. Now it's surprising how much epoxy this thing really soaks up because I had to use a couple different batches of epoxy to fill this entire ring. But once I did, it looked incredible. I mean, look at that beautiful gold color. It's such a unique variance with the gold and I feel like this project is truly coming together at this point. Now after I fill this thing up to the brim and looking back on my decisions on this process, I probably wouldn't have filled up this high because this is probably the reason why the tape came loose at a certain point and inevitably it made life just a little bit more difficult. But no matter what, this is a beautiful process and I always try and learn from my mistakes. So hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes as well. Now approximately 48 hours later I come back and I find this. Yes, there was definitely some leakage, but luckily there wasn't too much and we had the plastic wrapping below the form, so therefore anything that leaked out generally stayed on the wrapping as well as the fact that it was still very easy to prop up and off the back board due to the plastic wrap on the bottom. Now once I got this thing removed from the backboard, it was fairly simple to remove all the foam, even the inner section which I used my jigsaw to just cut out and remove the remaining. The real interesting part of this entire project though is the fact that because the tape fell off at a certain point, it seeped into the foam and it really made this unique ornate reef than anything else area on the edges and made life a little bit more difficult, but we'll just uh, go with it and start routing. 
Now for this project, I personally went out and bought this very expensive routing bit. Now this is a one inch roundover bit. And if you see the size of this thing, this thing is massive. And it's because we have a two inch wide section. So therefore, if you route both sides, you will have a perfect rounded circle all the way around on all four sides. The one thing you have to account for is that with a bit this size, you need to make sure you have a half inch shank to accommodate the size of a bit. Now the nice thing about this round portion of the project is the fact that it was a very simplistic process, as in I only needed to set the bit once and therefore I was just taking small amounts of epoxy through every single pass. Now the problem that I of course had to account for is the fact that there is a guide at the bottom of this routing bit so therefore that's how it gives you that perfect shape all the way around. However, if the surface that you're routing is not flat or even, that means that the routing bit cannot gradually and consistently make a nice sharp turn. Therefore, the large rough portions made it very unusual and much more difficult trying to have a nice clean, even surface all the way around, as you can see right there. Now to combat those issues, I then just took the ring to my oscillating spindle sander and then just touched up the sides of the ring. Therefore, I was able to get a nice even surface all the way across and allowed me to then use my router again to have a crisper and more fluid side on all of the edges. Now after all the routing is complete, you have something that looks like this. Yes, it's a bit rough and a bit unusual in some cases, but it's going to look beautiful after we sand it. So let's get to sanding. I grab my random orbital sander and by using 120 grit, I go over the entire surface and abrade every single area to make sure I have a nice consistent even edge as much as possible at least all the way across. After that, I take 120 grit as well as 220 as well as 320 and hand sand the entire surface. That way I have a beautifully smooth, even surface all the way around. And then at the end, I take some mineral spirits and wipe off all the miscellaneous dust particles that I can. Then after it's dry, I take Halcon Clear Rugged Clear Gloss Varnish and apply that to the entire surface. Now the nice thing about this varnish is the fact that you don't have to sand between coats and you can apply multiple coats within an hour. So I recommend applying one coat, let it dry for approximately an hour, then apply a second coat as well as a third coat if you so choose and desire. Now the nice thing I'm using right here is the fact that I have these bench cookies, but I also have finish caps on the bench cookies so that the ring is able to sit perfectly on top of it and I don't have to worry about dirtying up both sides because I do have to flip this thing over at a certain point. Now the moment that you put on this type of finish, the ring itself really does come alive with the, all the different pigments and grain structures of this entire ring. It's very unique and extremely enjoyable to watch. Now all I have to do is wait for it to dry. Because guess what? We are done. I love when trying new things actually works out, especially with pigments, and this truly adds so much depth and variance between the spray paint and the pigment with gold leaf on top. It really gives it a very unique shine, shape, and depth to the overall piece, which I absolutely love, and guess what? That's what I call one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah. And there you have it, episode number 66 of BOT fully completed, and I must say, I love how this turned out. It's not a normal project, as you all know from my channel, but in any case, it's all about learning new skills, and I definitely learned quite a few new skills along the way creating this. Hopefully it comes in handy in the future, and hopefully you guys all learn something. But in any case, thank you for your time. Please like the video, please subscribe to this channel, and please check out my Instagram feed and my newly developed website at boitools.me. You can learn how to support the channel from there. In any case, thank you for your time. Catch you next time. Hey, so Kona. Uh, Kona, what do you think of our ring? What do you think of the Sonic ring? Really would, you like, would you like a new collar? Would you like a new collar? Yeah.
yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah? No, let's not eat that. <laughs>